from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of AWS Public Sector Online. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hello, I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. We are here covering AWS's International Public Sector Virtual Event. We have a great guest. The star of the program is Max Peterson, good friend of the Cube, also Vice President of AWS International for Public Sector. Max, great to see you. Thanks for coming on this virtual remote interview, Cube interview. Hey John, it's great to be back on the Cube, even if it is virtual. Well, you know, we're not face to face. Uh, we have to go virtual. So the Cube virtual, you got the Public Sector Summit virtual. Um, this is the time of, of the year where normally we'd be out on the road in Bahrain, Japan, Asia Pacific, yeah. Europe. We'd be out on the summits talking to all the guests and presenting the, the update on public sector, but we have to do it remotely, um, you know, a little bit of a trade off. The good news is with COVID for at least you guys, it's a global media network. And with these remote interviews, uh, public sector is seeing a lot more global activity. And that's what I want to get your thoughts on. What is the business update internationally for public sector? I'm sure that with COVID, the pandemic, you're seeing a lot of activity. How is the public sector business doing internationally? John, you know, you mentioned one of the uh, silver linings of a pretty bad situation with the COVID pandemic. And that's been that it has uh, meant that people have to be resourceful, governments have to be resourceful. Um, and so there's been a tremendous amount of innovation. Uh, people have gotten used to uh, now using modern cloud technology to support uh, remote work and remote work, uh, learning. Um, out of necessity, we've had to figure out how do we deliver far greater uh, healthcare services uh, using uh, digital technology, telemedicine, um, digital social care, uh, uh, chime rooms. Uh, it really, um, in a nutshell, has been a tough six months for people, but a rel relatively um, busy six months for innovation and for IT for the public sector customers. You know, I did an interview a few months ago for one of the award programs in Canada um, with Accenture had a, a customer um, and this customer was a classic customer, oh, Amazon, you know, I'm not sure we do it all internally. He deployed AWS Connect in literally days that saved the lives of many of his countrymen and women by getting the entitlement checks out. And he was a glowing endorsement because he said with COVID-19, they were crippled. He said they will. They stood up a call center and literally he was converted. That's just one example, again, that's Canada, of, of the kind of um, solutions that you guys are enabling with cloud to quickly respond to the crisis, to use technology to solve other technology problems and also business problems. Can you give an example on the international front of where you're seeing some activity, because this seems to be the same pattern we're seeing. People who have used in the cloud, we, the Cube virtual, there'd be no Cube if it wasn't for uh, our cloud implementations. But this is an obvious, but I want to call it out, it's important. Can you share some examples of, of people internationally using the cloud to get and respond to the, to the COVID-19 pandemic and delivering services? Yeah, in fact, John, we're focusing a lot on that at the uh, Public Sector Summit online that comes up here in October. A um, Couple of quick examples. In fact, one of the top learnings um, is uh, speed matters. And so we have uh, Eve Curry from Australia who talks about uh, social and healthcare and how they were able to get a complete um, digital suite up and running for uh, supporting 5,000 uh, elderly patients and over 3,000 employees in less than a week. And that included get, getting up and running a video conferencing and teleconsultation capability using uh, AWS Chime. It involved getting up and running uh, collaboration space for the remote workers using uh, work, uh, work docs. And it involved setting up a complete uh, call center on the cloud using Amazon Chime. And literally that was done in less than a week. Another example, a really ambitious example, which again is, is a testament to the innovation and uh, the, capability, the capability that AWS brings to customers. Um, in India, they had a number of telemedicine applications. They were available for a fee 
but they didn't have a universal way to reach uh, the vast population in India. And so when the pandem pandemic hit, um, the organization that was responsible for the public health component was challenged to get a no cost teleconsultation telemedicine system up and running for outpatient services that could scale to reach a billion people. Um, they did that in 19 days. They got the system up and running. Now it hasn't gotten to a billion people online at one time, yeah. but they're right now doing 6,000 consultations a day with about 4,000 doctors, and they're headed toward 100,000 consultations a day. Um, so just uh, to your point, uh, speed and uh, scale, um, we're seeing it across the board from, from our public sector customers. You know, it's just mind boggling just to kind of pinch myself for a minute, 19 days, it's crazy, right? I mean, crazy fast. If you throw back to the eighties and nineties when I broke into the business, you know, young gun, client server was all the rage back then. And if you wanted to do like a big app deployment, Oracle, SAP, whatever, it was years, it was months just to do planning, right? I mean. I mean, think about the telemedicine example, 19 days, that's huge. I mean, just the scale is just off the chart. So, so I mean, if, if you're not a believer in cloud, I don't, people should be, should just go home and retire at this point because it's just obvious. Uh, the, the question I want to ask you specifically, because Teresa brought this up in my last interview with her, and I want to ask you the same question is, what is AWS doing specifically to help customers? I know customers are helping themselves. You mentioned that. What are you guys doing to accelerate this? How are you helping? Have you guys changed a little bit? Can you just share what you guys specifically are doing to help customers pivot to a, not only solving it, but having a growth strategy behind it? Yeah, John, that's a great question. Some of the things that we're doing are longstanding programs. And so customers from day one have had a need for uh, skills and workforce development. Um, we keep on doubling down on those programs, things like AWS Academy, AWS Educate, our restart programs in different countries. So number one is we continue to help customers double down on getting the right cloud skills to enable a digital workforce. Uh, the second thing, in fact, if I can for just a moment, um, there is actually a section of the public sector online called the new workforce, which talks about both the digital skills that are required and then also some of the uh, remote working skills uh, that we need to help folks with. So, so workforce is a big one. Um, the second one, yeah, and I'm super excited about this, because uh, we've opened up the opportunity for more customers around the globe to participate in our city on the cloud challenge. Um, and that gives a great opportunity to showcase and highlight the innovation of public sector customers and you know, win some AWS credits and technical assistance to help them build the programs. Um, but I think one of the most uh, the things I'm most proud about in the last um, six to nine months was when the, when this pandemic struck and we listened to our customers about what they needed, um, we came out with something called the AWS uh, Diagnostic Development Initiative. And that was a program specifically aimed at providing technical assistance, um, AWS cloud credits, uh, all to researchers to help them um, tackle the, the tough questions that need to be answered to help us deal with and then hopefully resolve the pandemic. So on the international front, like I said earlier in the open, we would have been in Bahrain. That's a new region, only a couple of years old. Um, obviously the historic, um, there's some geopolitical things happening there, opening things up. That's been a very successful region. This is the playbook. Can you just give us an update on some of the successes in the different regions, Bahrain and then APAC and, and other areas? What's some of the highlights? Sure, um, John, one of the things that I think is super exciting is that uh, all of these customers are developing new capabilities right now. Um, uh, one example from Egypt, uh, they had to get literally an entire student population back to school um, when the uh, pandemic hit. Um, and so uh, they, they quickly pivoted to bringing a online learning management system or LMS up on the cloud on AWS. Um, and they have been able to continue to teach classes literally to millions of students there. 
Um, we've seen that same sort of distance learning, uh, online education across the globe. Um, another example would be when countries needed to figure out how to be more effective in that sort of time uh, tested uh, contact tracing process. So, so when uh, a person um, has been found to, to have the, the uh, flu or the illness, the subject illness, um, they typically have a lot of manual contact tracers that, that have to try to identify kind of where that person's been and see if they can then um, help to control the spread of whatever the, uh, the, the disease is, COVID-19 in this case. Um, we put together with governments across the world, with AWS partners across the world, again, in very fast order, automated systems to help governments manage this. Um, Singapore is a super example. India is a, a massively scaled example, uh, but we did it in countries across the globe. And we did it by working with them and the partners there to specifically respond to their needs. So everybody's case, while similar at a high level, you know, was unique in the way that they had to implement it. And it's been a great, uh, great ride international, us with COVID, you guys have a current situation, you guys are pro providing benefits and obviously the cloud itself for the customers to build those modern apps. The question I want to ask you, Max, as an executive at AWS, also you've been in the industry um, um, with public sector pre-COVID, it's, you know, it's before COVID and it's after COVID. It's going to be kind of like that, that demarcation in the line in the society. Um, it has become a global thing. I just did an event with Cal Poly, I was mentioning before we came on, um, a small little symposium that would have been you know, face to face, but because we did it virtually, it's now global. Reinvent's coming up. Uh, that's going to be essentially virtual, so that's going to be more global, less physical space to face. Everything is, there's no boundaries. So how does that impact? How do you, how do you, guys, how do you guys look at that? Because it impacts you, I guess, a little bit because there's, if there's no boundaries. Right. What does um, that mean? You know, if, to John, I think this plays into um, what we are talking about in terms of uh, people and governments and organizations getting used to new ways of working. Um, and, uh, and so some of our new workforce development is based around that, not just the digital skills and the cloud skills. A couple of the, the things that we've recognized, and, and by the way, um, it's different, but done well, there's new benefits. And so, so one of the things that we've seen is where people employ uh, Chime, for instance, uh, the, the video conferencing solution or solutions from our partners uh, like Zoom and others. Um, and people have been able to actually be more in touch, for instance, uh, with uh, elder care. Um, there, there were a number of countries that introduced shielding um, that meant that people couldn't physically go and, and visit uh, their moms and dads. Um, and so what we've seen is a number of uh, systems uh, and care organizations that have responded um, and are helping uh, the, the, uh, the elderly uh, to use this new tech. Uh, and, and it's really actually uh, um, heartwarming uh, to see those connections happen again, even in this virtual world. And the interesting thing is you can actually step up the frequency um, and so you don't have to be there physically, but you can be there um, and, and interact and support with a number of these, uh, these tools. I think one of the other big learnings that we've seen from many organizations and just about every public sector group has to work with um, uh, their constituents on the phone. Of course, we've got physical offices, um, you know, whether it's a hospital or a outpatient center or a social care center. Um, but you always have to have a way to work on phones. What's happened during the COVID-19 pandemic is there's been uh, surges where information needed to get out to citizens or where citizens literally rushed the phone lines to be able to get the most current information back. Um, and, and the legacy call systems have been completely overwhelmed or inadequate. And we've seen customers launch the online call center in the cloud piece using uh, Amazon Connect as their starting point, but then you know, continuously innovating 
And so starting to use things like Lex to be able to deliver a chatbot function. Um, in, the, in the US, for example, one of our partners, Smarttronics, was able to automate the uh, uh, welfare and social care systems for a number of different states to the point now where 90 plus percent of those calls get initially handled and satisfied using a chatbot, which frees up agents to deal you know, with the more uh, difficult inbound calls that they get. I got to ask you, where do we go from here? What's next for these organizations post COVID world? You know, if we're, we're sitting at a cocktail party or sitting down having dinner or we're here talking remotely here, how would you, how would you explain to me what's, what's next? Where do we go from here? And how do organizations take that next post COVID uh, recovery and growth? What's your take? And John, I think that's a fantastic question to ask. Let me tell you what, we learn from our customers every day um, because we see them try and do new things. Uh, if, if I had to take my um, sort of crystal ball, I think we're in version one of figuring out how do we work in this new uh, environment. Um, I think there's a couple of key things that we're going to see. Number one, um, resilience and continuity of service is not going to be optional. Everybody is coming to expect that government, care, not-for-profits, education is going to be able to seamlessly continue to deliver the core services irrespective of these world events or emergencies. Um, and we see customers now, you know, really getting that, right? It used to take, you talked about it, um, heck, you couldn't get a system up and running in 19 days. You'd be lucky if you cut a purchase order in 19 days. And citizens and constituents just aren't going to accept that anymore, right? Uh, so that's one big uh, change that I think is with us and uh, will keep on driving uh, cloud adoption. I think the next one is how do we start putting the pieces together in ways that make some of this invisible. And an example, um, you know, kind of starts with that, um, with that uh, example in the US with the partner that was building systems to help uh, uh, welfare and social care call centers operate smoother. But if you think about the range of AWS services and the building blocks that customers have, we'll find customers starting to create that virtual experience in a version 2.0 way, where they tie the contact center into a uh, chat box and into a uh, uh, transcription, like for instance, being able to have a conversation with a parent and, and using uh, Comprehend Medical to actually get a medically accurate transcription. So the, the doctor can focus on that patient interaction and not on actually data capture, right? And then if that patient asks, uh, well, gee, doc, could you give me more information about, you know, X, Y, Z uh, medication or about what a course of treatment sounds like? Instead of tying up the doctor's time, you can go and use a tool like uh, Amazon Polly to then go text to speech and give all of that further rich information to that citizen. Um, yeah. I think some of those things, same scenarios, right? How, how do we go from this, this very fast version 1.0 response to a, uh, a more immersive, uh, less tech evident uh, capability that strings these things together that to meet kind of unique use cases or unique needs. Yeah, I think that's totally right. I think, you know, the 19 days, you know, I'm blown away by that, but I think, you know, when you talk about agility, that was a cloud term, being more agile with your code, business agility has come on the scene. And then with business agility, you have what I call, I call business latency. Um, and you went from years to months, months to days. And I think now as you get into the DEX versions, it's days to hours, hours to minutes, hours to seconds. Because when you look at the scale of the cloud, some of the things we were talking about what's going on with Space Force and globally around with space, latency, technically and business latency, this is the new dynamic and it's going to be automation, AI. This is, this is the new reality. I think COVID points that out. Uh, what's your reaction to that? And give a final message to the AWS international community out there 
on, on how to get through this and what you guys are doing. Yeah, John, I think your observation um, is, uh, you know, that, that increasingly uh, there needs to be a connectedness between uh, the, the services that uh, these public sector customers deliver. Uh, and so um, that connectedness can be in terms of um, making sure that a citizen who uh, is on their life journey doesn't need to continuously explain to government where they're at, but rather um, government learns how to create secure, scalable data stores so that so that they understand the journey of the citizen and can provide help through that journey. Um, so it becomes more citizen centric, I think. Uh, another example is in the entire healthcare arena where what we have found is that the ability to, um, to securely collaborate on very complex problems and complex data sets uh, like, uh, like uh, genomes um, is increasingly important. Um, and so I think what you'll find is you'll find, uh, we're seeing it today, right? Um, with with uh, customers like uh, uh, Genomics England and the UK Biobank, where they're in fact creating these secure collaboration spaces so that the best researchers can work against these very important data sets in a secure uh, yet trusted collaboration environment. So I think we're seeing much more of that. Uh, and I would say the third thing that we're probably um, learning from our customers is just how important that skills and workforce piece is. Um, with the accelerated pace, we continue to see pressure on uh, smart skills and resources that our customers need. Fortunately, we've got a, a great global partner ecosystem, um, but you'll see us continuing to push that forward as an, uh, as an agenda that we'll help customers with. Um, so I guess my parting comment would be, how could it not be? Um, I hope that the uh, customers that attend the summit are from all over the world I hope they find something that's useful uh, to them in pursuing their mission and in their journey to the cloud. And uh, John, I just, this is always a pleasure to join the Cube. Thanks very much uh, for the time today. Thank you, Max. Great call out. Just I'll call it out one more time to amplify the learnings and the workforce development starting younger and younger. The path to get proficiency uh, is, is quickly. You can be a cloud computing, cybersecurity, application, modern application development, all hot areas. Um, the new playbook is cloud and it's all there online. And of course, Max, global footprint with the regions. Um, the world has changed and it's going to be a pretty busy time for you. We'll be covering it. Thanks for coming on. That's great. Thanks, John. Okay, I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. You're watching AWS Public Sector Summit, the international online event. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, your host. Thank you for watching.